How are you? I'm good. Uh, well, you come from a musical family. Yeah. Um, so was it uh, natural that you that you went into music yourself? Yeah, pretty natural. Uh, well, was there um, any encouragement from from uh, from your household? Yeah, yeah. Everybody was. I wouldn't say encouraging. Well, I guess they were encouraging, but it was just uh, what you did, you know, play music. Uh, what, what kind of music did your your uh, family make you? Uh, my grandmother was in kind of did like jazz standards, you know, take the A train and uh, some Billie Holiday stuff, and amongst others, the girl from Ipanema, things like that. Um, my grandfather did like uh, I guess like. <clears throat> you know, like 70s country, country rock, you know. Uh, and my mom was in a band that did like a lot of covers, you know, so they did a lot of Rush and Judas Priest and Black Sabbath and stuff like that. Were there any Everything under the sun that was popular at the time, rock wise, and then went into some heavier stuff as well. But Did, did you like it? Did yeah, I loved it. I mean, you know, there's always a big party going on at my house. And uh, they were always practicing, and it was a lot of fun. Were there then uh, certain records uh, from your childhood uh, that you remember in particular? Yeah, I guess the first records I bought with my own money, or not, it wasn't my own money. I stole, stole like 10 bucks from my mom <laughs> when I was seven years old. Very bad, but uh, I don't know. I had the idea in my head that I wanted to go get some records, and I couldn't get her to wake up, so. Uh, I just took the money and Did you the store. eventually confess? I confessed years ago on a DVD, but... What was her reaction? It's fine. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago when I was seven years old. But, uh... So, yeah, I bought uh, Peace of Mind. Iron Maiden's Peace of Mind. It had just come out. And, uh... Let's see. ACDC, Back in Black, and Kiss Destroyer. What was your initial reaction to, to this music? I think I liked it. I mean, yeah, it stuck with me. I, uh, it's pretty much all I listened to. I think that the Iron Maiden record kind of won out you know, of the three, uh, as far as what I gravitated towards the most. No. But it's hard to remember being seven. But. But I, but I mean, when I was seven and eight, you know, I had long blonde hair. I wore like fake leather pants and had like a Judas Priest T-shirt. So I was a rocker kid, you know. My mom and dad were into cool new music, and a lot of people that were coming over to the house and hanging out were into heavy metal and into Judas Priest and Iron Maiden. So uh, I wanted to be like them, you know. So I, uh, uh, I don't know. I liked it. I liked the imagery that was associated with it. Was it around the, the same time that you picked up uh, the drums? Yeah, I mean, I always sort of played the drums. It was never anything that I was really intensely into. I was, but I wasn't, you know, it was more like a toy. When did it become something more than just something you do then? Uh, I guess maybe when I was around 11 or 12, you know, I started playing with other, other kids, you know. Some people would come over to my house with bring a guitar and would eke out uh, Metallica covers or whatever we could wrap our heads around, you know. And then started playing with some people that were writing some original stuff. And you know, I was like 13 or 14. And then from there, you know, started playing in bands that would play it out, you know, at clubs and stuff. About 16, I think. And then, and then it really took off, or I wouldn't say it took off, but it became more of a staple in my life. You know, it was like something I did. I worked a, a shit job in a mini mart, you know. And, uh, and then I played in my band, you know, and it was like the most important thing to me was sort of playing in that band. But uh, so there was a disconnect there, you know, I didn't really feel like it was something I, you could do and make money at it, you know. It was just kind of something you... So, so when did it point, uh, this point come, where you realized or, or had an epiphany, well, it wasn't, maybe I can do this for a living? Uh, it wasn't until I was probably around... It had to be like late 90s, like 97 or so. It was like, oh, we need to like, we need to tour, you know. We need to like book a tour and go do that, and get to go do that thing, you know. Um, so, what ended up happening was, I, my friend Dave Whitty that plays drums in Municipal Waste, you know the band. No. Uh, he was in a band called Human Remains a long time ago, 
uh, and we were really close friends, and we still are, but he hooked me up with a gig with a band called Today's the Day, and I went and joined that band in the late 90s, and, uh, you know, they were touring, so uh, that was my first taste of getting on tour and doing it for, for real, I guess, you know, and sort of making my living doing that. And, I found out that you could exist, you know, and, and play the music that you wanted to and exist on a club level and still sort of maybe pay the bills a little bit, you know. Did, did you ever think at that point that it would grow out to what it is now? No, I mean, you know, it's, just, it's hard to have any kind of expectations or, I mean, I, I guess I hear of some, like, bands of people being like, we're going to be the biggest band in the world, you know, or something like that, but uh, I just never felt that way about it. I just uh, wanted to, the mo most important thing was to find some people that I was compatible with, you know, music-wise, and, and then take it from there.